Hello everybody in YouTube land. Uh, I have come here to discuss a subject that is close to a lot of people's hearts. Um, I have a number of Christian friends that 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 believe it and um, with all due respect I'm, I mean I want to speak with them and and to them um, because I have a great love for them, but I, I feel they're, they have taken the wrong thought process. And, um, and this is regarding, uh, the flat earth, um, scenario. Now it's interesting. Uh, one of the first things that, that somebody said to me, a uh, former, uh, Jada friend, he was a friend. Um, I felt like he was a friend. Although I think if you are a J-Dub, um, it's hard to understand what a friend is because uh, a friend, a friend is a friend for life. I mean, you have you have an opinion, you have a different an idea, you have a different thought about um, something that's not what you'd say stepping out sides of what a God, God expects of us, right? Like, uh, you might like a round, to live in a round house. You might like to live in an octagon house. You might have um, a particular garden in, on your property that that you have a, a raised bed, and, and that's what you like. Um, some people don't like a raised bed, so they don't use raised beds. That's fine. I understand that, but um, as 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 a one-time Jehovah's Witness, one of the things that was always used is they they cherry pick scriptures, and and you yeah, I can go through this. I can pick out scripture here, scripture there, and I can make any doctrine I want. You could It'd be very easy to do it, uh, and you with just a little bit of charisma, which I'm not saying I have, but. With somebody with charisma and can tell a good story, can read a couple verses out of scripture, everybody, you know, these ones would believe that they're telling them the truth, you know. And I think that's what's happened with this um, this whole uh, flat earth scenario. Now, when I was in university, I took a surveying and um, we, did, had a, we had a survey, huge areas, and um, and then we had to take it back into AutoCAD and make a 3D model of it. And um, so we got all the training. We got, we were able to figure out a chunk of Earth and then survey it, that chunk of Earth and um, create a rendered surface. And we get a grade based on, you know, the completeness of it. So our, uh, I can't remember the course, I think it was surveying, but I can't remember, honestly. But there's a particular course I took, and he gave us an old Navy level. And that was the, our first step. He wouldn't give us the good stuff, the theodolite, until we actually used a Navy level, an old level, and leveled it and figured out the land based on that with a, with a physical marker. You know, and, and you, you could see the number on it with the level. You'd level, level the unit, and then you'd shoot it out. And you can figure out the drops, the different drops on the earth. And that's how we learned initially how to survey. Well, the second step we had to do is we had to use a really good theodolite, which they're self-correcting and they can level themselves. But if you were to shoot um, to one point and shoot back at it, back it's a back, uh, a back shot. I mean, you had two, or you had two theodolites that were shooting at each other from a great distance. You had to do a correction, and you had to do the a radius correction for the curve of the Earth, um, because there was drops, heights, drops because of of that curvature, and that it's known in the survey world, and and you have to use it in order to get a good straight line. That's just the mechanics, the trigonometry, you know, and and I know. I know they want to use the 
you know, the eight per drop squared per mile, eight inches per mile, eight, eight inch uh, squared per mile drop. And you really can't use that. It's just not accurate. Um, not in the sense that you understand it based on your eye and the, the tangent of a circle and another tangent. So it's not, it's not going to give you, it's not going to give you that, that drop that you want. You want to say, you know, it's dropped, you know, 260 feet and whatever length, and you should be able to see that drop. It's not accurate. You wouldn't be able to see um, that with your eye. Just using trigonometry, straight Pythagorean theorem, you know, or in sine, cosine, tangent, the theta, angle. It's, it's not, it's, if, you, if you're looking at a parabola and you're doing tangents of lines, um, you can't use that. And of course, the next thing that would be sent to me, and I've had it done to me many times, and that's why I was trying to say to you, um, as a JW, they'd cherry pick a scripture, and then they'd say, well, see, that's what it says in scripture. And uh, they'd say, I oh, see, that's what the Bible says. You're not listening to the Bible. And this, the same technique is being used by somebody who believes the earth is flat. They'll say, oh, well, you don't believe in God. You don't believe in the Bible. That's that's a way to shut you down. And um, if you're going to use the Bible as your base point, um, then you better use it, the whole thing, as is, right? Because you know how if you read the Word of God and you read it throughout, you know God God's Word is poetic and metaphoric. A lot of metaphors were used um, through the whole body of the Bible. And it's easy to see how somebody can take a scripture and make it into something they want it to be. And um, if you look in Genesis 1-1, you know, and, and you just, just logically think about it, um, God is trying to give you an overview of what he's done. He's not giving, it's not a scientific manual. He's not giving you all the details. He's not how he's not telling you how he made the tree. He's not telling you the DNA of, of a human being, down to the minute, minutest detail. And yet you want to use it for a manual for the minutest detail. And yeah, it's clear. It gives you amazing historical information. It gives you God's word as he's spoken it. Enough, un, he's given you enough information to validate faith in God, to validate the beginning of when it started and the, a revelation at the end to give you a view of, and, and of course, the whole body of the Bible is, is spoke for um, the past and the present and to bring it all together into one so that we understand um, God's plan for us, for, for everything. And since I was really young, I used to look, I always look at the stars. I mean, I couldn't help myself. And uh, I always looked up <clears throat> and I'd see course I came from Montana the state of Montana and so when I look up it's dark um, I don't I didn't live in a big city so I could look up and see and I lived in a number, number of different states as well um, that were quite a ways away from these locations I lived in the state of Ohio and the state of Utah the state of Washington um, the state of Alaska and um, and a number of California, a number of other states as well. And there's one thing that I noticed when I went out at night because I always made point to look for it. Because at a very young age, and my brothers and sisters, whoever they were, all my family would always make a point to look up at the Little Dipper. 
the North Star, the Big Dipper. Look up there. Now, of course, you'd look up, and one, one day it's in one location up there, and the next day it's over there in the other location. You know, or not next day, but, you know, future. I'm talking future, overall. Maybe a month later, half a month. And so it made sense to me that the earth was moving, right? Moving through a huge body, a huge um, heavenly body. And God speaks of the, the things he's made as keeping track of times and seasons and days for us. It's not to keep track for him. He doesn't need it. In fact, in the future, we won't worry about times and dates and seasons. But right now we're in a, cl a clock season because it's been built that way by God. And he built it in the firmament. Yeah, he built everything in a firmament that he built. Set the sun in the firmament. Set the moon in the firmament. The planets, Saturn, Mars, all of them, all of them we know about, Venus, Jupiter, all the different uh, planets he's set in the firmament. And when he describes making the earth, he gives it a real overview for us, very poetic. He says, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That's all he tells us. That's the beginning. As he's telling us that God, by his word, as it does in John 1.1, 1, 1, by his word, creates the heavens and the earth. And then it says, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. We know there's water in other locations, not just on the earth. Right? He uses water in other places not just on the earth. But, we know the first day he created that light, the great light, the sun for the day, the moon for the night, in the firmament, yeah. And it says he also created the stars, at the same time. They were stuck away in the firmament, far away, far as away as our telescopes can, can see them. Long, long ways away. We, people have done calculations based on light distances and all this stuff, and, you know, who knows. But it also says God laid out it with a line. In Job, measuring line. They take a tape measure and measure it out. It says a measuring line. No, he knows how we think. When we want to make something or build something, what do we use? We get a measuring tape or a piece of string and put it out, pull out a certain length, and we know how to make a, a distance, a known distance, so we can transfer that distance to something else to build it. So <clears throat> it says here for the earth, it says, and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which are above the firmament. Okay. Above waters, below waters, and other waters. Above waters, below waters. And he tells us what he calls them. Right? He calls them seas. The waters are seas. And then in... in Verse 14, so I was taught reading and, or just, you know, ad-libbing, basically, <clears throat> Genesis 1, chapter 1. And one of the scriptures that I, I look at is uh, Genesis 1, verse 14. Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. That's what I was just explaining. That's your time piece for us. 
and let them be for the lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. You notice that? And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven. So, some placed in the firmament to give light upon, upon, upon the entire earth, upon the earth. So it's back behind it, right? Upon the earth. So it's here as a globe, and then the sun is emitting light upon the earth. Which makes sense if you look at everything that light does. Like yesterday, I was outside and um, contemplating this video, and I was looking up, and I could see the moon. It was still daylight. You could see the moon. The sun was going down in the east, or excuse me, excuse me, in the west. The sun was going down in the west, and I looked up and I could see half the moon lit. A round moon lit. And it's lit on one side. Why? Because the sun is emitting rays on that side of the moon because of the location of the sun, a relationship to the moon, right? And the earth. And it's turned to that particular location, that particular location on the dark side, right? But the sun's no longer emitting rays upon the earth or just before it's it's getting to that point where it's no longer going to be hitting it's it just it's almost refracting it's just kind of bouncing off bouncing off and up and yet it'll keep turning and it'll get darker and, and all of a sudden it'll be dark and that sun will bounce off that moon and we will see at what direction the sun's at. We'll know that it's over there because the, the sun was setting in the west. Right? And we'll see that the moon is now lit up. Not to mention, if I'm in the northern hemisphere, I'll see my big dipper, little dipper, north star, and I'll see the deer, uh, excuse me, the moon in one location, I'll see it and expect to see the crater, sort of the darkness that sits on the moon. And then I come down here and I'm still seeing the moon, but I see it, it looks upside down. I don't see the Big Dipper, Little Dipper, North Star anymore. Now I see a whole another vast expanse of a solar system, which is a Southern Cross and all the other stars that I don't see in the north. Haven't seen in the north, none of them. Um, and I lived in all those different states, and the United States is big. Um, I never did see the Southern Cross till I came to the Southern Hemisphere. And another thing to mention is that the water goes clockwise down the drain. In the Southern, southern Hemisphere, it goes counterclockwise down the drain. <clears throat> so if, if God uses metaphors and, and, and you're going to go and say, Scott, well, you need to read your Bible, follow the Bible, right? Then, okay, then, then we follow the Bible and we become, as we were at one time, not seeing it as it is, metaphors, um, parables, poetry. It's the word of God, yes, but we need to see the complete picture without adding in things. So, one of the scriptures I look at is Revelation 7, verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth. 
that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. They're on the four corners of the earth. So that means the earth's square. If I'm going to think in, in those terms, if I'm going to follow the Bible as it stands, without uh, thinking outside of it, I'm going to consider this scripture as being solidly fixed, that there's four corners to the earth. Right? Is the earth a square? I don't believe it is. Um, I believe it's a round globe that we live on. Because all, all the evidence points to that. Therefore, I can't really use this as, as that standing on it as fact, right? Four corners. It's, it's a way of speaking. So we understand for a human to understand. Because we live in linear thought patterns. We, 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 we stand on earth. If we're in a house, we see a house as being, you know, four corners. God knows that we think that way. He made us. Therefore, he pro helps us process that information so we can understand it. So here, here it says, four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. So, if we go to, let's say, Job, and this is the one that is used often, and you know, and God is talking to Job and he's trying to put Job in his place, and he says in Job thirty-eight verse four, "Where hast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding." He said, "Where were you when I was making the foundation of the earth?" Does that mean he's doing it like we do? We're taking blocks. You know, pouring concrete, footer, foundations, <clears throat> square building. Could be a round building. Could be a, a yurt. But it says the foundation. So just, just help us understand a point, a reference. Where were you when I laid the foundation? Who hath laid the measures thereof, that thou knowest, or who hath stretched, stretched the line upon it? Did God stretch a line? Did he need to stretch a line? Or was he trying to help us understand, like we understand, a line? Like if I'm a surveyor and I'm, I'm setting up my theodolite, or my old navy level, and I'm getting it straight, level with the earth that's curved, and I'm referencing it from another point, and I got to do a correction, right? Back in the day, they used chains, measure it with chains, and they used rope, knotted ropes, all sorts of techniques humans have used to try to get their their location as straight as they could. Now we have. GPS. Well, how do we get GPS? You get a cell phone. My goodness. How do you get that point? How do they know exactly where you are? With a GPS, a vector location. Your cell phone. You use Google Maps. Right? They've mapped out the whole world. And now there's satellites up there that shoot signal. And you receive this information very quickly of your location so you can drive from A to B. How is that done? Think about that. How is it done? Global positioning system. <clears throat> so it gets down here and it says in verse 
9. It says, When I made the cloud the garment thereof, is a cloud a garment? It's a metaphor. And thick darkness, a swaddling band for it. Swaddling band? What's a swaddling cloth? It's for a baby. There's no swaddling cloth up there. And break up for it my decreed place and set bars and doors. Did God set bars and doors? Do you see bars and doors anywhere? I don't. But that's what it says. I can take it literally. He's helping us to see it. Everything Jesus ever said, when you, re when you heard Jesus, and Jesus spoke as God because God was in him, he used parables. He was poetic in his, in his speech. Why? It enriched, it enriched it. It helps us to visualize it better. And when he gives us these descriptions of bars and doors, it helps us to see it. Right? So, I think the point I'm trying to make is a doctrine can be created. A doctrine can be created with a single verse out of the scriptures. Okay. There's a doctrine out there right now in Daniel chapter 9, verse 25 or 27. That somehow the Antichrist is going to set a covenant with many. They create a doctrine. People believe it. it. Had nothing to do with that. Absolutely nothing to do with that. Nothing. If you read the top context prior to it, you know that he's speaking of Jesus. Jesus making a covenant with many, and that he'd be cut off three and a half years, which he was. He was cut off. He was killed. He set a new covenant. Because the whole the whole Bible was built on the plan. God's plan. God's plan. Start to finish. Using the word of God, his word, as spoken by him to make it happen. As light and he created the light, he created darkness, he created the sun, he created the moon. So when you look up the night sky and you see the moon, which is round, and if you've seen a lunar eclipse, you know, you can see the shadow of the earth casting upon the moon. Because the earth here, sun here, moon there. Perfect unison. And I'm sure God created that for us to see something spectacular that he's created. Perfect distance, perfect Perfect, amazing geometry. And we would be taking away from God's creation if we would say that something, something is flat that is so perfectly done that's round. Sun round, the earth round, the moon round, spinning a thousand miles per hour. Yeah, it's a hard thing to comprehend. But it's huge, 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 huge. And you're not going to feel it. No, you're not. And we'd be taken away from that creation because of the seasons and times and days in Genesis where God has set these in motion for us to be amazed by it. Yeah. Flying through space at 67,000 miles per hour around the sun. That's why you see this. You see the solar system differently in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. Okay. Now, for somebody who's been indoctrinated, and I have been indoctrinated. I was indoctrinated for years, believing particular things. And I'm not going to go into all of them. There's too many to go into. But I was indoctrinated with 
a belief system from infancy. And I understand when uh, a JW gets out that he's skeptical and he doesn't trust anyone. I mean, the government doesn't really have um, 